Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger and my friends. In today's video, we're talking about difficulty in fighting games. Spurred by a pretty recent event, the AT&T Annihilator series. And before we get into it here, let me show you the clip of what helped inspire this video. Does Apex Legends do that? When you play and you go to a bronze lobby, it doesn't place you against... Sometimes it does. But, like, the thing about it is, like, that's a 1 in 60 chance. Like, you're telling me there's that many players on Street Fighter? There's that many players on Street Fighter? At least you can point-click shoot. It's fucking easy. Point-click shoot. Mad easy. Mad fucking easy. You can watch literally a 10-minute tutorial how to do it, but not have to be frame fucking perfect. You literally have to, like, actually... Like, why can't I button smash? Can we just go back to fucking 1999 where I can literally just doom, doom, doom and do crazy fucking combos with my forehead? Because as of right now, this whole frame perfect shit is annoying. So before anything else, do not judge him too harshly. That is the salt speaking. And we've all been there. So this gentleman is Noko, a professional Apex Legends player sponsored by TSM and has won tens of thousands of dollars in various Apex tournaments. However, what he is not is a fighting game player. So how did he wind up playing Street Fighter V? Well, the AT&T Annihilator series is basically a big tournament with all sorts of, you know, pro players, sponsor players, influencers, this, that, and the other, and they play a wide variety of games. Some of these games are a bit more traditional for like, you know, the esports crowd, Halo, Apex Legends, right? Among this also Dead by Daylight, and the thing here is Street Fighter V, obviously enough. And for a lot of the people playing in this tournament, basically all of them but one, as far as I can tell, uh, this caused a great deal of stress. As maybe you're pro in whatever, you know, FPS game, but fighting games are very, obviously, a very different kind of deal. And if you're around like FGC Twitter or stuff like that, you've probably seen a bunch of various clips of this tournament already. As all these pro players from other games, and I do not mean this like in a really bad or derogatory way, but they're pretty crap at Street Fighter. And there's a lot of reasons for it. Uh, Street Fighter, you know, is not a game you can pick up in five minutes and succeed at a professional level for one, obviously. However, more than a few players were defeated before they even really tried. They just saw Street Fighter was up and basically decided right out of the gate, nope, can't do it. Is any game that I'm most scared of my performance in? It's Street Fighter. So now why is this? Why is Street Fighter the scariest game now? You know, we got Apex, Halo, Call of Duty, and somehow this is the scariest game for pretty much everyone to play. Now, on one level, they just aren't as experienced with it. You know, that's fair enough, right? Absolutely. But... There's also, uh, going by a lot of the matches, a lot of what I've seen from the tournament, there's this perceived aura of difficulty. It's literally like, this is all skill. There is so many times in shooters where you could pick up a controller and like, you can get, you can aim assist, like you won't be the greatest player in the world, but can you get a, like a sick ass one clip? Yeah. Can, against like a top player? Yeah. Can you go to like this game and fucking drop a, a, a top player? No, no shot. You get fucking ruined. Like, this game is the hardest game I've ever played in my life. Like, you can get lucky in shooters, you know what I mean? Like, you, I'm, I'm not saying you're gonna be like, you're not gonna kill a professional player every single fucking time. What I'm saying is like, how many times have you played against like a silver player or, or a bronze player that turned to you, one clipped you, and you're like, bro, what? You know what I mean? Versus like, that'll never happen with this. Ever. Now, I do appreciate the insinuation that fighting games are, you know, God's gift to skilled players and all that, right? Uh, but if you played any amount of fighting games, you've definitely lost to people worse than you in really stupid ways. That said, however, even quote-unquote bad players still have usually a wealth of more of experience and knowledge than the people playing in this tournament. They're basically, for the most part, except for Doublelift, coming at this at a, you know, from a first-timer experience. And for a lot of these players, it was very terrifying and stressful. So why exactly is that? For a lot of the players, it seems to be execution is one of the big scary points. To that point, there's uh, more than a few Eds, I saw Falk, a Honda, like characters that either have no motions required or you can just mash a lot. Like specifically, I saw one of the people playing Honda and pretty much all they did was mash light hands. Cause you know, you don't gotta do motions, you just gotta slap a button a lot, right? And 
you know, for the general skill level of the tournament, it was working out pretty good. So this was a next level play. And in a way, it also warms my heart because way back in the day, going back to like 91, like when I first played Street Fighter 2, I picked Honda because he, you can mash the button and get a special move. Motions were way too hard for me. I could not do charge moves until like a couple months in. So just slapping buttons was my only recourse. And for a lot of the players in this tournament, that's exactly it. Like uh, if you come from other genres, motions are a very alien concept. Like the only 360 you're doing in an FPS is the 360 no scope, right? Spinning pile drivers, not so much. I suppose that can lead to one of the greater arguments we've been having over the last couple months in uh, the FGC is about motions in fighting games in general, because DNF Duel has easy inputs. The upcoming Project L League of Legends fighting game, which is going to be an incredibly big deal, also has simplified inputs. And even though myself, personally, I am a big fan of motion inputs, I can't deny the fact that on this stage it highlights very clearly that for a lot of first timers, motions scare people off. They're considered very difficult. And they are literally having a fight stick that's bigger than the biggest penis in the entire world, and they're just fucking riding that shit. So I think that's a pretty elegant way to put it anyways. Another thing is fighting games, you know, on top of the motions being complex for people who do not play fighting games, is they don't teach you how to play fighting games good. Tutorials and fighting games are generally pretty bad. Even ones that are considered good, like Under Night and Birth, has a good tutorial. It has a good tutorial for fighting game players, not so much for people who've never played a fighting game. If you walk into Under Night and Birth and you've never played a fighting game before, you're in for reading a small novel of a bunch of concepts you've never heard of, and by the time you're done, you're going to forget 90% of it. In basically every other genre but fighting games, all the mechanics of the game are doled out to you over time, right? You can learn in little bits and chunks. Like if God of War dumped every possible mechanic and thing on you immediately, you'd be really confused. So it doles out stuff over time in various different sequences. In fighting games though, it's kind of all in your face all at once. So that's already a little difficult in and of itself because people, they don't like the info overload and there's no good way to do it other than a raw tutorial mode, right? In other games, when they drip feed you various tutorials over the course of the game, it's because they have, you know, a game you're playing, a single player game. And single player content in fighting games has been pretty dire at best in the last few years. Back in the day, we used to have single player modes that were amazing, like Soul Calibur 2, Virtual Fighter 4 and Virtual Fighter 4 Evo, like grand single player modes that you could spend time learning a lot of the concepts. Nowadays, you got very little to work with. Either play arcade mode versus the AI with no fluff to keep you engaged, or go online and get fed to the wolves immediately. And when you get fed to the wolves online, it's generally not gonna instill good feelings. It doesn't matter. I, I just want to quit. I just want to quit. I don't want to quit anymore. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I am so mad. I'm 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 done. I can't do it, bro. I can't. I'm going to fucking lose it. So while making this video, I've seen a lot of people go online, make fun of this, that, and the other for various things that happen in this tournament. But I watch this stuff and I think, man, I get it. As someone who teaches people how to play fighting games for a living, this genre is really difficult. And when you don't know what you don't even know, it's so hard to get a grasp on any of the concepts. Like, once you start getting your feet on the ground, it does get easier, and it gets exponentially easier over time. And some of the things that help with that is a lot of fighting game language, as it were, is cross-game. If you learn a bit of Virtual Fighter, you'll learn a bit of Tekken. If you learn a bit of Tekken, you understand frame data, you'll learn a bit of Street Fighter. If you know a bit of Street Fighter, it'll help you play Mortal Kombat. But to just start, that is the hardest thing of all. Compounded by the way that fighting games can make you feel stupid in a way no other genre of game really can, right? Because it is one-on-one. -on -one. Like, you know, if you play League, you play Apex or Shooter or whatever, if you lose, well, like, you know, it's a meme, I guess, but you can blame your teammates, right? In a fighting game, you only get to look inward. The only person that lost was you. And when you lose and you don't even know why you lost, right? That is not a good feeling. In a shooter, if dude turned the corner and blasted you with a shotgun, you died. Yeah, that sucks. Maybe you're angry, but you inherently get it. In a fighter, you can lose when you're at a beginner level and not even really know why you lost. And that's very confusing and frustrating. And the only way to combat that is to get better. And unfortunately, 
The majority of fighting games are not really that good at telling you how to get better, and that's one of the biggest problems. It is in no uncertain terms that fighting games are one of the most difficult kinds of genres of games that you can play. And to me, one of the lessons watching this and watching a lot of pro players and other games get very frustrated with Street Fighter is a lot of the games don't exactly lend themselves to learning them very well. Now, granted, you know, this is like, you know, a sponsor tournament sort of deal and not everyone's invested in playing fighting games or learning them necessarily. But it did open my eyes for especially the people that did try. They got very invested and they got very angry and frustrated. Just looking at all this, it is my hope in future fighting games games that are coming up, like a Street Fighter VI, like a Project L, they take a greater look at just how the onboarding, if you want to use that term, on fighting games are in general, and how can we make it easier for players to just get their feet wet. Maybe simple motions is the answer. I guess Project L will prove that when that eventually comes out one way or the other. But at the very least, stuff like tutorialization could be a lot better than it currently is. More than just read a couple menus worth of text. This is what an EX moves means. Now get out of here and you figure it out. Figuring out ways to teach people as they play is definitely the way to do it. Just like every other kind of game does. So to close out, uh, I just want to say for uh, Mr. Noko, who we've used a few clips from, he over the course of the event has internalized his salt over uh, you know everything I suppose you could say, and I sincerely hope that you know when this is done, him and everyone else who was playing in this tournament, uh, they can just try fighters, be it Street Fighter or any other fighting game, just again outside of the stresses of a tournament and all sorts of money being on the line, because you know hey I think fighting games are kind of cool right, and they can be really fun when you play them in an environment that's not. A horrible stressful blender where you don't know nothing and everything's on the line. That said, my friends, I want to leave you with these lovely words. Fighting games are unbelievably difficult. Anybody that plays fighting games, they're the greatest gamers in all of existence. I don't care what you play, it doesn't matter. If you play fighting games and you're good at them, you're just superior to everybody. Doesn't matter. That all said, thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well, and go out and play some fighting games.